Shalom, this is Brother Kashukwala from the GMS Atlanta Church, giving all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Wachakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, peace of salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. All right, today's lesson is going to be taught, uh, named Salakia. It's going to be named, giving a carnal blessing is the least you could do. Yes, it's okay to give a carnal blessing. A carnal blessing is like a gift. All right, or some some type of something of assistance that holds you over for a time, holds somebody over for a time being, or anything. You know, you could you know, new shirt, give money, whatever. It's a carnal blessing for something that you receive. <clears throat> All right, so this is like the least you can do. Even so, um, when the scriptures talk about give our bodies as a living sacrifice. That's correct. Well, we're in these carnal flesh. We have uh, we give everything we give everything up to um Yahweh Hashem Shai, including our time, our effort, our energy, our physical energy, all right, our fleshly energy, all that. So everything we give everything up. That's the least we could do, literally. But I'm speaking more so so towards an um an apostle, an elder, or a bishop, you know, or anyone who is um or even a younger brother, anyone who's uh, feeding you in a spiritual sense, hey, is, you know, a carnal blessing is the least you could do, you know, he's doing something, a brother is doing something that could potentially save your life, all right, so, um, I'm gonna start off with, um, let's see, First Corinthians, and then we're just gonna flow, this is, uh, First Corinthians, 9 and 11 it says if we have sown unto you spiritual things is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things so pretty much paul is like look man look i didn't gave you these spiritual inclinations i didn't gave you these spiritual answers and i've been i've been showing you the way to life i've been showing you you know yahweh shy you know i've been preaching that to you which is the better than anything you could ever get Anything on this earth, I'm giving you the wisdom through you. How about Shemiah was shy? So it's like I sown unto you spiritual things. Now, when you go back to First Corinthians, what the third chapter? Matter of fact, I'm gonna get it real quick. The First Corinthians, the third chapter. First Corinthians three and five. It says, "Who then is Paul?" And who is Apollos? <laughs> but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, right? Apollos watered, all right? But the Most High gave the increase, correct? So what Paul is saying, look, man, it says, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, if I planted these things in your mind, these spiritual things in your mind what's what's so more is a carnal thing you know how come you can't give that up especially in a time of need you know how come you can't pay your tithes that is literally the least you can do you know what i'm saying paying tithes that's a big thing that's the least you can do for what the knowledge and understanding that we've received from the apostles and elders literally that's the least you can do if they come down to visit a camp the least you can do is give them a place to rest their head. The least you can do is have them not have to come out of pocket the entire time they're down here. The least you could do is make sure they're fed every single day. The least you can, of course, unless they're fasting, but we wouldn't know because they that's the secret thing you keep between the Lord. But I'm just saying the least you can do, you know, is actually give them a ride. Do this, do that, do this in the third. That is the least you can do. And those are carnal things, okay? Because they have sown unto you spiritual things. Even your head of camp, your heads of camp, all right? Your first and second, third, whatever in command. Or even the younger brothers with you, all right? You, they've sown unto you spiritual things. The least you can do is reap and give them carnal, a carnal blessing, Okay? A carnal blessing is the least you could do, okay? 
We're going to go to uh, Romans chapter 15 real quick. Romans chapter 15 and um, I'll just start at 25. It says, but but now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. There you go. Minister is to be a servant unto, okay, to the saints. Because the scriptures say we endure all things for the elect's sake. All right. We do these things for the elect. Okay. It says, but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints, to serve, to serve the saints, to sow unto them spiritual things. Verse 26 it says, um, for it hath pleased them of Macedonia and, um, I think, Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which were at Jerusalem. Verse 27, it hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if, gen if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, right? For if the Gentiles have be been partakers of of their spiritual things, okay, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. So you receive something spiritual. That's all this is saying. I got the truth from the apostles and elders on down. I, I was a Gentile, and then I received it, right? I was a partaker in the spiritual things that they were relinquishing. OK, because it says to give it freely. All right. They didn't hide nothing back. They just they gave it freely. Spiritual things. It's out there. The scriptures say in Proverbs in ninth chapter, whoso is simple, come and let him eat. All right. Just paraphrasing. Matter of fact, I'll get it real quick. In Proverbs nine, I think it's like the sixth verse or something. I can't remember. Oh, fourth verse. It says, whoso, whoso is simple. Let Proverbs 94, whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of my wine, which I have mingled. That's right. Look, everything was already prepared. Wisdom is ready to share with you. Like, it's not holding anything back. Like, eh, eh. no, it's ready to give you something spiritual. Okay. So it's the same thing the apostles and elders and the heads of your camps have done unto you. All right. So it says, now you're a partaker of a spiritual thing that was relinquished. Now it says, their duty, who's, who's their duty? Right here. Their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. Again, giving a carnal blessing is the least you could do. It's, the, it's a way you... Giving a carnal blessing is showing some type of, of affection. Real talk. I'm just being real. It's showing some type of affection that you care, that you appreciate the things that were given to you. You know, paying your tithes is a, is a, is a first off, it's a law. You're supposed to do it. It's for everybody's well-being. And so the camp and the body can be good. But also it's showing your appreciation. For receiving these spiritual things and being a partaker as such. Okay? Being a partaker as such. Get one of my favorite scriptures. This is Hebrews chapter 3 and 1. It says, We're for holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. You are a partaker of the heavenly calling. Okay? It says, Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. That's right. We consider it because we are partakers of the heavenly calling therefore we give our bodies as a living sacrifice to Yahweh Shai because he gave us a chance to get the hell out of Babylon and get delivered by Yahweh Shai so we consider the apostle and high priest Yahweh Shai Hamashiach simple as that okay the least we can do is give a carnal blessing that is literally the least we can do okay but also with, with giving your blessing you got to be wise with it you got to be absolutely wise with it, all right? So let's see something. Let's go to the book of Tobit, the fourth chapter. Let's see if I can find it. Bear with me. Um, this is a Tobit chapter 4 and 8. It says, if thou has abundance, give alms accordingly, all right? 
Let's look up what an ohm is. A charitable alms, a charitable, a charitable relief of the poor. All right, that which is given to relieve the poor or needy. Exactly. Okay, hold on. We're all poor. We're all needy. We all need us out a, a, a savior. This is Ecclesiastes ten and six. It says, "Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low places." Who's the rich? Apostles and elders up top. <clears throat> your heads of camp amongst you. All right. Your, your officers and your, your deacons and your captains, all that. Okay. Those are the rich that sit in low. And even your younger brothers. Those are the rich that sit in low places. We're low. We're in slavery. We're in captivity. We're in bondage. I don't care if you got nice cars. You got a nice house. You ain't got really, really ain't got shit. All right. We're, we're low. All right. The rich sit in low places, okay? So the word alms, it says that which is given to relieve the poor and needy. Your carnal gifts, for say, or your carnal blessings that are given to your heads, you're giving them to a poor and needy, okay? Facts. That's 100% true. Now, they're not poor and needy in the wisdom, though, okay? I'm not saying that. In the carnal aspect of things, yes, we're all poor and needy. That's what I'm saying. It's the least you can do to give your carnal blessings to a poor and needy, okay? Who is giving you something that's absolutely priceless, all right? This is Sirach chapter, uh, Ecclesiastes of Sirach chapter 26 and 28. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffereth property, okay? All of us who are in this thing... We're suffering poverty, but we're in a spiritual war right now. And the apostles and the elders and uh, the, the ones, the elders that who are above you, I'm speaking as myself because I'm a younger man myself. I got a lot above me. OK. They taught me how to arm myself for the spiritual battle. I didn't know nothing about Ephesians 6 chapter until I was taught it. Simple as that. I didn't know nothing. Now I know how to. um to a certain extent, fight this war properly, okay? Because you, I said certain extent, extent because you always, you're always ever learning. The scriptures say ever learning. You're always learning every single day. There's no, there's no stoppage of learning. And if you are, that means you're stagnant, okay? So it says a man of war that suffereth property. So the least you can do is give that man of war who taught you how to war spiritually a carnal blessing. A little money here and there. Whatever. I'm not saying you have to go give your head of camp $50 now. No, I'm just saying anything. If the, if the brother is in need of something, don't hesitate to automatically jump to it and give accordingly. Okay? I'm going to hold this real quick and finish this. It says, if thou has abundance, give alms accordingly. If you have abundance, you can give. It's, it's easier to give alms. All right. Which, again, alms is which is given to relieve the poor and needy. All right. It's easier to relieve the poor and needy if you have abundance. But you also give that to them accordingly so you don't lose that abundance and you can still multiply your abundance to help the body still. Continue. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. If you only got twenty dollars in your pocket. And you have to pay tithes. Don't be afraid to give two to five dollars. It's still something. But you gave accordingly to that little that you have. That little that you have, you will be rewarded. There's a scripture for that. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this one. Um, let's see. Ecclesiastes 12. All right, there we go. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus 12 and 2. Do good to the godly man, and thou uh, shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, because look, man, a poor and needy more than likely can't pay you back. Okay, they just need that. 
And you have to be like, bro, it's cool. You don't got to pay me back. You're good, bro. But what? It says it's not for him yet from the most high. You will receive a blessing for the little that you had, but you gave accordingly from that little that you have. You're going to receive a bigger blessing. Whether it the blessing end up being carnal where, damn, I only have $20, but the Lord blesses you and you get a, you, you find, you find yourself getting a thousand racks or something. I don't know, whatever. I'm, I know I'm speaking money because it's the most, um, it's the easiest example. Okay. Or you just get a huge spiritual blessing and you incline in the wisdom and brothers see that because the scriptures say what? Those who do things in, I'm paraphrasing, those who do things in, in a secret, the Lord will bless thee openly. Next thing you know, you, you're up and in your ranks. You know, you're teaching classes now. Brothers are more so coming to you for questions because your wisdom has gained. Now you're helping the body even more. That's a blessing. All right, verse three. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. It's a serious thing to give alms. So again, it's a serious thing to give a carnal blessing because it's the least you can do. For the things that you receive, for the things that can save your life, the least you could do is give $20 to the tithes. Literally, that's the least you can do. Least you could do is give 10%. That's it. That's the least you can do, man. Okay? So let's go back. Uh, what was I? Ecclesiastes 26 and 28. It says, and men of understanding that are not set by. There you go. Not set by. All right. And one that returneth from righteousness to sin, the Lord prepares such a one for the sword. Okay. Let's jump back. Um, uh, let's uh, get a preset real quick. Let's see. Sirach 18 and 17 it says, Lo is, is not a word better than a gift. Both are with gracious, both are with the gracious man. There you go. Again, I keep reiterating this. Giving a corn a blessing is the least you can do because a word is better than a gift. The words that you got are from the scriptures and you got the understanding for it. You know, wisdom is a principal thing with all that getting, get understanding. Okay. It's better than a little simple gift you could give a brother, all right, for what he gave you, for the understanding he gave you, okay? Again, I'm not saying just because a brother breaks down Revelation 12 for you, you have to go out your way and pay that man $80. No, 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 no. It's cool, man. It's cool because I just read it in Sirach, the 12th chapter, that deed that the brother uh, the brother did for you is actually a, a, an alms, Okay? But he will receive something from the Lord. All you got to be is like, hey, man, the water, I appreciate it. And me personally, when I teach and I'm teaching a younger brother, I get I get the satisfaction out of it when they understand. When I ask them, do you understand what I'm talking about? And they be like, bro, yeah, yeah, I get it, bro. The water, I'm, that, I'm, that's my gift. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, man, dude, that's what's up, man. It makes me feel good inside that I can help another man out. Okay. That's my gift, me personally. But the word is better than any other carnal gift you can do. But a carnal gift is the least you can do for a brother. If a brother's sick, give him a, a garlic tincture, a cayenne pepper tincture. That's a gift, okay? The brother's going to thank you for that, okay? And if he doesn't have the means to pay you back, well, guess what? The Lord will pay you back. The Lord is, a, is, is the master of recompense, <laughs> okay? All right? Simple as that, man. He's the master of it. Um, let's go to uh, Sirach 11 real quick. So, um, Sirach 11 and 17, it says, The gift of the Lord remaineth with the godly, and his favor bringeth prosperity forever. Correct. The, the gift of the Lord remaineth with the godly, meaning that wisdom, okay? It remains with the godly. All right, hold on one second. Let's see. Um... This is uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. It says, Blessed be the Most High, even the Father. Salakia. <coughs> even the Father of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the Father of mercies, and the Most High in the power of all comfort. Verse 4 Who comforteth us in our tri tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. That's right. All right. 
So it says right here, the gift of the Lord remaining for the godly. And what's one of those gifts? The comfort that he has, that he left for us. Okay? The comfort that he left for so us. The comfort that he left for us. All right? It says that we may be able uh, to comfort them which are in trouble. It says by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of the Most High. Correct. That is the gift that he, was, that he gave it to us. Therefore, we relinquish that gift unto others. And the others who receive that, going back to Romans, uh, going back to Romans, let's see, Romans 15 and 27, that comfort, hey, it's their duty now to minister unto them in, a, in carnal things. That's their duty now, okay? And so it is in my duty as a younger brother to pay the tithes, to help the bishops out to help the captains out if they need help. Okay, I'm speaking myself first and foremost, you know? Even myself, I can do better with alms, okay? And even reading it, it's clearly, I uh, understand that you do it accordingly, okay? You do it accordingly. And you know what, you know your abundance, you know your limitations. Well, well help them, okay? It's the least you can do. It's the least you can do for the things that they have gave to you, the comfort that they received from the Lord that they give to you. It's the least you can do. All right? Take the comfort they gave you and give it to somebody else. Okay? That's why we go on the highways and byways to do so, man. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying, man. Because, hey, look, you got something that can save your life, your household life, but you got it from somebody, and you owe that somebody. Okay, there's levels to this thing. All right, so I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechak Dash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. This is Brother Kashikwala from the GMS Atlanta Church here in Atlanta. Until next time, like always, I'll say Shalom.